Hi guys, my name is Michał Orzewek and welcome to Interactive Light System for Unreal Engine 4. In this video I am going to show you how to utilize this blueprint system in your projects. First, let me introduce the idea, present how does it work and then we'll go through more practical examples in Unreal Engine. Alright, so Interactive Light System, ILS in short, allows you to quickly set up an interactive connection between lights and light switches. So basically what I mean by saying interactive is that you control when or how lights are switched on or switched off within certain area. What's more, behavior of the light, such as flickering, heating up or pulsing, can also be manipulated. And in addition to all that, an audio feedback for different events is supported. Let's take a brief look at content. First thing you'll notice in the interactive light system folder is the three main blueprints light switch, point and a spotlight. You use them to create this interactive connection I mentioned a few seconds ago. I'll show you how to do that in a moment. The ILS package come also with some pre-made examples to help you to prototype your game or scene quicker. These examples are based on around 30 static meshes with LOD support, unique or multi-purpose materials and textures. And there are also some sample sounds such as light switches, flickering, buzzing and so on. Alright, having said that, let's take a look at some examples. Ok, let's say you are making an architectural visualization and you want to have an interactive desk lamp somewhere in your level so players or users can actually switch it on or off by pressing, let's say, F on the keyboard. To get started, just drag and drop any light blueprint into your level, and I'm going to use one of the examples we've got there. Just to be clear, examples are basically templates with static mesh, like a desk lamp in this case, and some predefined light parameters which I'm going to show you in a second. The light is switched on by default, but it's ok for now. Let's drag and drop a light switch somewhere close to the desk lamp and let's see what we can do. As you may notice, this blueprint has a box volume. It represents an area where player needs to be in order to use that switch. We can modify it, of course. Change the box extent to modify its size in any direction. Or you can simply scale it up or down. Now we need to define which lights are controlled by this switch. So go ahead and click this little plus icon to add new element to lights list. Let's use a pick button and choose our light. Ok, the light has been added and now we've got our connection. Underneath the light list, we've got three checkboxes with events that control how you switch on or off the light. By default, it's set to control by key and left mouse button is chosen. We wanted to control it by pressing F key, so let's go ahead and change it. Click here on the list and... What's nice about this list is actually supports any input you want, whether it's an Xbox One controller, mobile gestures and so on. Ok, let me type F and find it under keyboard category. Ok, we are ready to test our interactive system. But before that, let me just add really quickly switching sounds. Ok, hit play and let's see what we have. Alright, so our desk lamp switches on and off while I'm pressing F key. That was pretty easy. Let's stop the game and let me show you what you can actually change in your lights. Select the desk lamp and let's go through all options we've got here. First, static mesh. It's obviously a mesh that light blueprint uses. So if I change it to something else, it also updates the mesh here. Ok, let me undo that. Then. In a default section, we got Enabled checkbox. It represents the state of the light object. It's for testing purposes and I would not recommend to change that after your light is connected to any switch blueprint, as it gets overridden by that. So it's to test how your light is going to look like when it's switched off. Ok, moving on. Light position. It's exactly what the name suggests, but you need to be aware of one thing. Let me use empty light blueprint to demonstrate that. Ok, so light position value offsets light objects from the point it was created in the blueprint. 
drag these numbers out to change it and see what happens. Now, if I check Use Default Position checkbox, you will see it returns to its initial position. You can grab this little diamond indicator to change the position as well. Like so. So let's go back to our desk lamp. And now if I uncheck this, you can see the light moves to a different position. The next section, Light Control, has options which control light object properties and its behavior. Max Intensity is the same value you set in a regular point or spotlights. It defines how bright the light is. Mean Intensity, however, is used in a different events or effects such as flickering, pulsing or when you set heat up time to something different than zero. Then this value is taken into consideration. I'll show you later how it works to make it clear. Light color is of course a light color, but it also sets an ILS color material parameter. It works only if you have such parameters somewhere in your material node chain. Let me show you what I mean. Let's drag and drop a bulb for this example and let's change the light color. Ok, red is fine. Notice how the surface of the bulb changes along with the light color. It's because interactive light system supports material parameters. You just need to use a proper name. Now I open up a material that is affected by the light color value change. As you can see ILS color is one of the factor parameters here. And now when we open the parent material we can see that parameter is used here. So that's how it works. I will create another tutorial video and show you how to create a custom objects with ILS material parameters from scratch. But for now let's back to our desk lamp. Ok, next parameters are easy, trust me. Switch on and switch off time offsets are values defined in seconds to control how much a light object has to wait until it gets switched on or off. Yeah, I think it's better to show it than say it. Let's take a look. I will set the switch on offset to 2 seconds and switch on to let's say 4 seconds and let's give it a try. Ok, I pressed F and after 2 seconds it switched on. I press F again and wait. And it switched off. So basically it's great for simulating exterior lights, garden lights and especially when you change the lights off on leaf checkbox. So you got the idea what it does. Ok, moving on. Similar to time offsets are heat up and cool down times. And again, you define values in seconds to control how long do the effects last for. Let's try this with 2 seconds for both of them. Let me just reset previous changes to default. Ok, as you can see after I push a light switch, it gets a very smooth warm up before reaching max intensity. Please notice that it uses mean intensity value as a starting point. Ok, now let's switch it off. We got reversed effect and the light reaches intensity of 0 after 2 seconds. Alright, then we've got ILS emissive. Same as with ILS color is a material parameter which we can control. If I drag this number up or down, you can see how it affects our light material. It's important to remember that emissive is controlled here in this case. Finally for this section we got a light behavior. From the drop down menu you can choose three different types. A default, which is the one we've been using so far, flickering and pulsing. Here are examples of two other light behaviors. I have to say that flickering is my favorite. It's just perfect for horror games where most of the lights are broken for some reason. And pulsing. It's great for traffic or construction lights. And by the way, what's nice about those two effects is that they support volume modulation of idle sounds. It means sound's volume changes automatically along with light's intensity. So when the light gets dimmer, sounds it's more quiet. Please notice how this buzzing sound effect adopts to light intensity. But saying of sounds, there is a special section for that. You can add up to three different sounds for different effects. Light switch on, switch off or idle sound. 
but please keep in mind that these switch on off sounds are different from those you add in light switch blueprint, so don't mistake them even though they seem to be the same. Alright, I think that covers up all options we got in the light blueprint, but let me show you one last feature from the switch blueprint. Let's select it and if you scroll down the details panel you will find the text section. Let's go ahead and enable a text label. It adds a text render to that blueprint. I can change it, move it around, adjust the size or color. But how does it work? Basically, the text is only visible when player is inside the box volume and it gets hidden when he leaves it. You can use it as a help text, for example. Before I wrap up this video, I would like to show you how blueprints are organized. Let's open up a light base and see what we have there. Paweł Siech, who is the creator of these blueprints, did extremely great job with notes layout, functions and so on. Everything here is so logical and intuitive. The ILS sounds like a simple system, but a lot is going on under the hood. Anyway, the pack itself is a great learning material for everyone who wants to discover the real power of blueprints in Unreal Engine 4. Ok, that's it for this introduction video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and if you got any questions just let me know.